Okay, I was uh, informed uh, by the, the guy that owns the radio. I told him that uh, his display was all set. He told me, uh, so did you have any problems with the power? I said, uh, what are you talking about? He didn't tell me anything about the power, so I just <laughs> actually hooked it up and uh, noticed that it was um, on my meter here. It was, uh, it's kind of blurry because I have a, uh, a real close-up um, uh, lens on here so I can show you what's going on, but uh, it was only putting out about 20 watts on high power, which is uh, pretty low. Now, I've had actually one of these uh, very similar Kenwood radios, but one of these uh, all-in-one uh, RF uh, output stage, and uh, the most common problem was is the crack in the ceramic on the uh, back plate of the heat sink. Uh, these are very, very difficult to repair. Um, this is a the success rate on this is uh, hit or miss. Uh, you, you can either repair it or, or it's just uh, going to be what it is. Um, what you got to do is you got to look for a very fine crack in the circuit board, uh, the ceramic board, which is very, very hard to find. Uh, to the untrained eye, you would probably never even see it. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here and uh, see if you guys can see any uh, cracks on this board. Looks okay, huh? So uh, I'm going to show you where this crack is, and it's very common in these uh, all-in-one output stage. Um, see if I do. I don't even know if the camera will actually see it, so we'll find out. But it's actually right here. Let's see if I can get a little light on here. You can just kind of see some lines in the solder. That's about it. But it goes from. Let's see if I can get the. Let's see if I can. Uh, this is not easy here. Let's see if I can get my jewel of screwdriver. This is right here. And it goes all the way down to here. So, what you gotta do is we're gonna have to try and bridge this up, which is not easy because this whole thing is. Uh, fused to a, a heat sink, so soldering this is not as easy as you would think, and it usually doesn't come out too pretty. But we're gonna give it a shot and see what we can do. So, uh, yeah, that's where it usually breaks right about here. And there's another common spot, is like I think it's right here, but I've, I've checked that under my eye loop, uh, everything looks okay here. But the most common spot on these is right about here. And uh, to someone that's just looking at it, uh, you would definitely pass this over. So um, it just looks like, you know, somebody ran a screwdriver across the top of the uh, solder. It doesn't even look like anything's broken or anything, but it's enough to cause problems. So um, I'm going to re-solder it and I'm going to at least try to and uh, see what happens. Alright, so I made the repair on that final now, and um, now we're getting some good, uh, a lot better. Um, it's not going to be perfect. I mean, this thing is, uh, um, you know, it, it took a beat, and it's got a small bubble in one of the uh, uh, the finals there. It's, a, you know, it's kind of an odd setup. So, I mean, this is probably the best as it's going to get out of there is you know, about about 40 watts or so. So, um, you know, this is a, it's a lot better than it was at 20 watts, so... Let's see, we're low, watts medium, and then low, 5 watts. So, I mean, it's pretty close to spec. The spec is about 50 watts on uh, high, uh, 50 watts on high, 12 on uh, medium, something, and 5 on low or something like that. So, So even the medium's just up a little bit high. I can probably back that back down now. I think somebody's been in here, so um, I don't know. So that's about it. This is probably as good as this one's gonna get. Um, you know, that final's a real, real pain in the ass. So that's probably as good as it's gonna get. All right, just to show you why I can't get max power out of this thing is uh, I've already showed you, um, you know, the. 
problem here. And like I said, this is a not fun job. I tried my best to get a solder bridge across all those. And it wasn't easy, but um, this one was the hottest, actually, the one on the edge. So I put a big blob on that one. So that's good. So the reason, the main reason why you can't get max power out of this anymore, uh, it's 10, 10 watts shy, is because, you know, at one point this thing must have overheated because if you look inside this basically a, it's like almost like epoxy or um, um, hot glue or something. I don't know what it is. It's, it's a weird material, but um, I'm not going to poke at it. But just to show you why, I just get some glare in here. See if I can get it out. But there is a bubble suspended one of the junctions in the transistor right there so this is never right there there's a bubble there so at that point in the transistor is no good anymore and um, that's as good as it's gonna get with the repair that I did so 40 watts and uh, it may degrade even worse over time, but uh, it's a lot better than the 20 watts it was putting out. So, um, that's all you can do, really. Uh, unless you can uh, come up with another part for replacement on the uh, the final here, which is a 4-pin. Um, actually, the uh, case cover for it here is a uh, Toshiba S-EB17. Um, I don't even know how much this pot goes for. I'm going to guess anywhere from the $60 to $100 range. Uh, I, that's just a guess. So if it's worth it to uh, the person that owns it, he can uh, he can uh, think about doing that or not. But, I mean, the radio is old, so um, I did get a little bit more power out of it by doing that repair. So uh, it's probably as good as it's going to get. And, um, you know, I probably wouldn't throw a ton more money into this thing. Um, I would just run it the way it is and uh, that's about it so that's uh, probably the final thing I'm gonna have to do on this radio